attending uh, this morning's meeting of the Police and Crime Panel. Um, before I begin, um, I thought it might be helpful, um, due to the nature of the event, to do a round robin uh, to introduce members and also members of the Commissioner, Commissioner staff, Chief Constable, etc. Uh, as well to start off, I'm Councillor Paul Lynch of St. Helens, um, I'm the Chair of the Panel for 2019 2020. Um, and go to my left first. David Moore of Scrutiny Partnership Manager, those of the Council supporting the panel. George Harrison, Scrutiny Partnership Officer, supporting the panel. Councillor Jane Aston, I'm the Nosley Rep on the panel. I'm Simon Shaw, I'm one of the seven council representatives on the panel. Councillor Michelle Sweeney of St. Helens Representative. Um, Councillor John Say is the second rep on the panel. Councillor Les Rowe. Chief Constable. Morning, Keith Dickinson, Director of Resources at Lewis Police. Fantastic. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, do we have any apologies? Yeah, we have one apology from the collective member. Fantastic. If uh, everyone can yes. uh, So we begin at 2A, which is the Police and Crime Commission's precept proposal. Thank you, Chair. Um, this is the uh, probably the most important meeting of, that we have in the year. Um, as you all know, the Policing Minister, Kit Morehouse, announced the police funding settlement in January last month. Merseyside receives an additional £23.3 million pounds in government grant. But is the mic working or is it just it is an Maybe you need to be slightly closer to it. Is that better? Yeah. Oh, right, okay. You don't need to start again. Um, so that £23.3 .3 million in government grant has been given to enable the force to meet their officer recruitment targets, which have been set by the government for the first stage of what we call Operation Uplift. That's the government's policy to recruit 20,000 more police officers by the 31st of March 2023 in England and Wales. Merseyside's first stage recruitment target is an additional 2,000 police officers by March 2021. And that's the number... Thank you for, for correcting me on that. Uh, so 200 police officers in, in, by March 2021. And that's the number that I consulted on when I uh, uh, talked to the public and when we consulted online. Following that, the force will be required to recruit a further 460 officers by the 31st of March 2023. I have to say this is welcome and it's an investment that the public want and support. However, the government haven't provided any additional grant to fund the increase in the day-to-day -day running of Merseyside Police, the cost of which increases every year, as you all know, as local councillors, due to pay and price inflation, as well as national and local commitments. These costs are expected to be met through the precept, expected, that is, by the government, uh, to be met through the precept and potentially by efficiencies from the force. 
So in terms of the precept, the government announced that police and crime commissioners could ask local taxpayers for an extra £10 a year for a Van D property towards their police service through the council tax without the need to hold a referendum this year. This, if achieved, would raise an estimated additional £4.7 million pounds for Merseyside Police. Now, the increase in the precept equates to approximately 13 pence a week or £6.67 a year for a band A household. That's the lowest council tax category, but it's the amount paid by the majority of households on Merseyside. This would increase the police element of taxpayers' bills from £134.65 to £141.31 per year for a band A property. I understand that by asking the public for more money, they will quite rightly expect something in return, which is why I'm promising a budget in 2021 that will maximise the funding available to enable the Chief Constable to not only recruit the 200 police officers required under the first phase of Operation Uplift, but to also bring forward the anticipated recruitment of an additional 300 police officers under Operation Uplift by the end of March 2021. So in one year, we hope to achieve 500 new police officer recruits. Consequently, the budget for 2020-2021 allows an increase, I've just said that, of 500 police officer numbers, uh, increasing overall our numbers to just below 4,000. This is still a little way off the 4,600, well, a long way off the 4,600 that we had before austerity measures really kicked in. Um, and it's some way off the level that the Chief Constable needs and the public of Merseyside probably want. But I believe it's the start of the recovery and it provides some stability for the force <coughs> over the next few years. I have consulted the public, as you know, on my proposals. The overall response has been 83% in support. That's <coughs> adding together both the face-to-face -face consultation with the online responses. <coughs> uh, I believe I have the backing of the public and the Chief Constable to increase the precept by £10 on a band D property. And I would ask the panel <coughs> to agree. The Chief Constable is currently assessing where best, because I know you're going to ask, where best to deploy uh, these additional resources. He will be able to provide an indication of where these resources are going to go. Further detail on that will be provided in the final budget report, which I will consider at the end of February. So the report contains the preset proposals for next year, and I know some members have had a briefing from John Riley, the Chief Finance Officer, so I don't plan to go any further into the report at this moment, uh, but I am happy try and answer any questions on the report, but I think first, with your agreement, John is going to do a short presentation uh, on the detail of the budget for those of you who didn't manage uh, to hear his uh, personal report earlier in the week. Is that okay, Chair? Thank you, I'm minded to agree. Uh, I think it would be a good idea to have uh, an in-depth uh, discussion, uh, you know, an in-depth presentation on these matters. I don't see any challenges to that from the panel at this stage, uh, so I'm happy to proceed. Thanks, Chair. Okay, um, Chris just asked me to pick up some of the main, or the key headlines from, from the report that you've got in front of you. Um, first of all, I think it, it's important to put this, the budget and the precept proposal in, into context, really. Uh, between 2010 and 11 and 1920, overall funding for the police service, including the precept, has reduced in, by 21% in real terms. As a result, police officer numbers have fell by 24%. Uh, that's a reduction of just over 1,100 police officers, going from an original um, budget establishing of 4,588 down to 3,467. That's where we are at the moment. And during that period, there's been an overall increase in crime of around about 23% over, over that 10-year period. Now, in June this year, uh, sorry, 
Um, the government announced their policy of Operation Uplift. It's, as the Commissioner has said, it's got to include an additional 20,000 police officers uh, by the 31st of March 2023. Um, the government have announced the first phase of that. Uh, the first tranche is 6,000 officers nationally, and May's size share, as the Commissioner pointed out, is 200. In terms of phases two and three, uh, we're assuming that uh, we'll get an extra 260 uh, following year and then in the final year 200. So bringing up an extra 660 police officers uh, on May's side. And as the Commissioner said, that still uh, is not enough to bring us back to the 2010-11 position. In terms of the funding settlement, uh, the government did fulfil their promise in, in terms of giving the police service an extra £750 million for the recruitment of 6,000 officers by March 20 and also making um, for the forces to make relevant infrastructure improvements needed to recruit all the additional officers by March 2023 as part of Operation Uplift. Not all the 750 million has come to commissioners, 50 million has, has been retained by the Home Office, uh, the 700 million has come to PCCs, uh, 532 million of that has gone as an unring fence grant in the core grant, but also there's 160 eight million pounds which has been set aside as a ring fence grant uh, which is to be paid into a, in arrears to forces who set, successfully meet their recruitment targets. And as the Commissioner said, um, the preset flexibility has been given ten pounds um, and also there's no other inflationary increases in the core grant funding and also a number of specific grants also have also remained as they were in pre previous years. It is only a one year settlement and there is a lot of uncertainty beyond uh, 2021. In terms of the impact on Merseyside, uh, the core grant has gone up to 254 million, which is an increase of seven, over 17 million, 7.5%. Uh, that 7.5% increase has been received by all commissioners. In addition, there is um, access, access to a ring fence grant of just over 5.5 million pounds. So overall, in terms of grant funding, it's gone up by 23 million pounds. Uh, as the Commissioner pointed out, no inflation increase in the core grant. And if the Commission does um, increase the precept by £10, uh, the maximum amount of money that will be available to the police service is £359 million. So in terms of the precept proposals, uh, the Commissioner is looking to increase the precept at uh, the referendum threshold, uh, £10, which equates to a 4.95% increase on last year. Uh, in terms of a, a band D, um, you can see that that's an increase of 19 pence per week. And obviously for a band day you can pay slightly less, it's 13 pence a week. The advantages of, of increasing the precept, obviously it builds the income into the base budget going forward. And it's really important it does that. It is um, within the referendum threshold, therefore it's not deemed excessive by, by the government and it wouldn't trigger a referendum. Um, the increase does maximise the resources that are available to Mayside Police and increases the income by £4.8 million and will help address the pay and inflationary pressures within the budget that we've got at the moment. Obviously, the disadvantage is that council taxpayers are going to pay more and it increases the burden on the local community. The Commissioner has consulted uh, through a, a SNAP um, survey online and also a, ro a roadshow in each of the local areas. Um, and the, as the Commissioner said, 83% of those people who, who uh, responded, have supported the Commissioner in, in, in looking to increase the precept and help strengthen the front, front line of the precinct. So, the Chief Council is also supportive, so the Commissioner has the support of the Chief Council and the general public uh, for this proposal. And as the Commissioner outlined, uh, in terms of setting the budget, it will maximise the resources available to the force, enable the Chief to meet um, Phase 1 of Operation Uplift, by recruiting 200 police officers by 31st March 20. We're also enabled the Chief to recruit uh, 300 officers ahead of phases two and three of Operation Uplift. Uh, in addition, recruit an additional 166 police staff members. However, we can balance the budget next year. There are still some significant financial challenges ahead. Um, based on the current assumptions that we've got in, in, in the report to yourselves, we are forecasting just about a £5 million deficit next year. Um, and over the MTS period, a further £23 million. 
Now that is due to the impact of pay inflation, increases in capital financing costs, but also the assumption that the core grant remains static over the period. The only increase in income really comes from the preset, which is at a 2% level. So the force will be required to deliver some efficiency savings over the medium term. We have got a healthy level of reserves at the moment. Uh, you'll notice from the report that we're not proposing to use any reserves in 2021, but they will be used to help the force deliver the efficiency savings that are required over the medium term, as well as support operation uplift. Um, so as I said, there's a lot of uncertainty and risk around the funding at the moment. We've only had a one-year settlement. The next CSR is due in um, April 2021. We're hoping that will be a three-year settlement, and hopefully it will confirm the funding for Operation Uplift. But at the moment, for 21 onwards, we've got indicative grant allocation. There's real uncertainty about There's been a lack of information from uh, the government on uh, funding beyond next year. There's also the risk of a funding formula review, which may have a negative impact on ourselves. In terms of cost pressures, paying prices, pensions, the emergency service network, and increases demand on service do create a risk for us going forward. So the Commission is looking to balance the budget next year, uh, but there are some significant risks going down, going down the line which we will need to address. But obviously we need that bit of more certainty around the funding uh, in the next CSR. Thank you, sir. Set of the reserve rationale, why, given the tax burden that's been placed on the public, I know that you yourself have said you've been very reluctant over previous years uh, to place the burden on the public of police funding. It, funding, in essence, it negates central government's duty and obligation. And we were wondering whether you made any, um, if whether you considered any other option than placing the burden on the public. It is always something that I consider. Um, in the circumstances of previous years, where I have <coughs> maximised the precept, taken it up to the threshold of a referendum, I've done that and, and, and gone to the public and explained that even though I'm asking them to pay more taxes, they're going to get less in return because that was the impact of austerity year on year. And therefore, we have by government dictat it's shifting the burden over onto policing. Um, last year, the only option was to go with the £24. Um, well, no, there were other options. It could have not uh, imposed any increase at all or gone for half of it. But in order to protect the budget, which is my primary responsibility, to, to secure for Merseyside Police the maximum resources, then I believe it's right to consult and ask the public, do they support the approach of raising the precept in order to protect the budget of the police? And in previous years, even though they were getting less and paying more local taxes, Merseyside's public, all across Merseyside, have said, yep, we support that approach. And in very, very many cases, people say, we need to protect the numbers of police officers who are serving our communities. The public almost always talk in terms of police officer numbers. Uh, there have always been members of the public who've said to me they're finding the burden increasingly hard. Last year was particularly difficult because we were raising it more than double what we're asking for this year. So I go to I go I consider what is my duty as a commissioner, and that is to maximise the resources, and then I ask the public. And if the indications from the public are that they feel the burden has now become so great that I should not follow this strategy, then I would change the strategy. But this year, it was even more positive than we've had from well, it was more positive than I remember uh, in the consultation. And therefore, I'm confident that the public support this approach and that if I was standing for election again, they would re-elect me, notwithstanding the fact that I put the precept up every year. So I'm confident that the people of Merseyside believe 
that we need to maximize the budget insofar as it is humanly possible to do it within the rules within which we operate. And that's why uh, I've, I've asked I'm asking the panel if you agree with that approach. And my view is I'm confident that the public want it. If the, the alternative would have been to have gone to the public and said, okay, we're getting £23 million in, and so I'm not going to ask for as much this year. However, if I'd have said that, I would have also had to say the consequence of that will be that whilst we're getting uh, however many, 200 as I was consulting on, new police officer posts, we may well have to close more police stations to pay, we may have to adjust the other areas within the budget that are, we're beginning to feel the cost pressures. Uh, and it, it felt, well I was quite confident that the public would support the alternative strategy which is the one that I follow. And it's the, it's the strategy I followed right from the start. Uh, so I've been, I've been consistent throughout my whole period as police commissioner. Thank you, Chair. Um, just regarding consultation, um, you said 83% were in favour. That's, a, that's resoundingly in favour. I was just wondering what kind of numbers did that cover and was it representative of all boroughs of Merseyside? So that's sort of one, one two-part question. And then secondly, on the rationale for um, front-loading the new recruits, um, obviously there are costs, increasing costs then, of having to pay salary pension contributions for the two years prior to the, what we would have planned under the proposed structure from the government. Is that all uh, accounted for in this budget? <coughs> I'll answer the first question about the consultation and then uh, perhaps I'd like to, uh, to talk uh, or Keith or John about the, the detail, um, which I'm confident we can answer. <coughs> um, on one of John's slides, there were the detail of the consultation. The total number of people who responded were 1,717. Those were through a combination of online, 554 people responded to the online survey. In the roadshows, we call them roadshows, it's just the in word, it means me standing in a supermarket with a clipboard, stopping people with, while they're going in or out, coming out with their trolleys, sometimes dodging them. Um, and we spoke to 1,163 people, and it was a straightforward yes or no question. I didn't. They, I asked. We usually ask, are they residents of Merseyside? So we want to know that they are council taxpayers uh, or residents of Merseyside served by the police. Uh, and we just explained the budget. We, I, I say, uh, would they agree to an increase in their police precept uh, in return this year? for no cuts within the police service across Merseyside and an additional uh, number of police officers I, I consulted on 200, which is the government's uh, target. And uh, you've got the results I showed. 1,425 people all told voted yes, said yes, and 240 said no. Uh, there were 52 people who said they didn't know, uh, and there were some who did want them just didn't want us to be stopped. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's a really interesting process. It's the, it's the way the police authority used to have a, a, a team of staff who went out and consulted the public. I felt uh, it would be useful for me to join them, and so we do this every year. Other, other PCCs consult in different ways. I know that in Lancashire they pay quite a considerable amount of money to have a telephone survey done, but they do that on the grounds that they uh, ask the surveyors to consult by age group and, and income level and where they live and so on. So ours is a bit less scientific, um, but it's cheaper. It's just we go out and do it. Um, and I feel it's a really quick and effective way to test public opinion. And we get a very good response from the people Side. Now you ask, does it cover the whole of Merseyside? Uh, I personally, this time, because it was such short, a short time frame in which we could do it, and I had one or two commitments that I, I couldn't do, which, one of which I think was our family meeting, 
Um, <coughs> I uh, attended road shows in St. Helens, in Southport, in uh, Upton on the Wirral. Uh, the supermarkets are terrific, so they all uh, welcome us on board. And um, I think where the others were. In Liverpool, we consulted in Smith Town Road, the big supermarket in Smith Town Road. I can't remember off the top of my head what the others were. But we, sorry? In Highton. Uh, oh, I missed the Highton one, uh, which I really always enjoy. But uh, and we also did uh, the big supermarket at the uh, road leading to change at Aintree. So Merseyside was well covered. Uh, the members of the public who took part did so under no duress. They just uh, were asked if they were willing to take part. And I have felt every year that this would be a good way uh, to test it and to get an answer from the public, which you generally get an indication early on which way it's going. I have to say, right across the Merseyside, the response was pretty much the same. Thanks, Councillor. The reason that uh, I was to bring in staff early in agreement with the Police and Crime Commissioner is quite simple because we've got that 18 month training period before police officers become effective. Uh, and the challenges are such at the moment in relation to policing that I need to get as many staff in as possible, as quickly as possible. Uh, not done rashly, not done without considerable thought around <coughs> on the budget and that. But significantly, we are making real progress in relation to policing across Merseyside. Just this morning, got our uh, Her Majesty's Inspectorate's report um, for the last period. And once again, Merseyside is the best performing force in the, the metropolitan area in the country. And we again sit in the top handful of forces nationally for performance. I want us to push on from that, increase the safety of, of um, Merseyside's communities. And to do that, because of the increase in demand, because of some of the increases in crime we've seen, and I'll counter that by saying we've seen some significant reductions in crime as well. Burglary is down 14%, Burglary in dwellings is down 14% across the county. We've seen really good um, increases in what now called outcomes, the old detection rate. Merseyside has the highest outcome rate in the country at the moment. Uh, that shows how proactive our officers have been on the back of the money that was given last year from the uh, in agreement with the panel uh, for our increase in proactivity. It is now paying dividends for us and I want to speed up and increase that so we maintain our position as a force that is really looking after the communities of Merseyside. Now, all that said, there's a financial cost. I was passing to Keith to explain how to pay for it over the short term. Good morning, everyone. Uh, just to go through that, I mean, I'm, I am an accountant, so I don't do things sort of willy-nilly, and, and, and certainly from from, um, from a risk side, from risk averse. But I'm, I'm confident that what we're doing here is is affordable. Uh, there are challenges, so we're not going to suddenly start splashing money around all over the place and, and just spending. Um, I've only been at the force a year, uh, and after 16 years in the NHS, uh, I can confidently say that we have a really, really, really tight ship within the force. But we move things very quickly as well. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm confident that we'll spend it in the right areas um, at the, at, for the right for the right reasons. Um, there also will be some funds going into some of what we call the non-pay areas, because um, the officers will need uh, and the police staff will need IT equipment. Um, some of them will need vehicles because we're going to invest in road policing and, and local policing. Uh, other areas, sort of the, the estates, the facilities will need to be expanded. Um, but we've moved really, really quickly as a force. I'm really impressed. Um, we've mobilised really quickly for this for this investment. And, and so, over the period of, of the next three or four years, I'm, I'm confident we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to meet those needs and, and we'll produce a, a decent financial position from that. Thank you. Uh, so I have uh, Councillor Shaw. to get into a, well, I have to say a philosophical area <coughs> and it's it's this uh, the party the political party that's currently in government 
10 years ago, brought in police and crime commissioners. And I, I, I disagree with them. I still don't. I mean, personally, I'm sure you'd accept that, Commissioner. But my understanding was the philosophy was that you have people who are accountable every four years to the local electorate. They make decisions. If they make the wrong decisions, if their force doesn't perform and they don't you know, like replace the chief constable, they pay the price at the ballot box. So it's, a, it's accountability to your local electorate. What we have here is the government, as I say, the same party that introduced them because that was, I, I, think, I think I've been fair, I think that, that is and was the philosophy, saying, in our case, we want you to recruit 200 new police officers. And generally, I think all of us in this room actually do support that. But the point is that if there is X million available, it might be that the right decision, the decision that you or your successor would want to be said, well, actually, 200 is great, but actually, what I think what is better, and I'm willing to face the election about is to say 180, because I'd like another 50 PCSOs. And actually, although they sound like bureaucrats, they're not. But police <coughs> staff, you know, like inquiry officers, in the past, you had lots of police officers doing that, paid an awful lot of money, able to do lots of other things, and I, I don't know what mostly not. So it's really, philosophically, the danger is that the, that the logic of police commissioners is being diminished significantly by central government saying, for political reasons, perfectly, you know, we, what, what, is it 20,000? You know, because we want to become 20,000 nationally, you will do this, you will do that. And I'd just like to have a comment, because, uh, and also an explanation, there's reference in reporting 4.2.3 to um, nearly six million pounds in the ring fence grant, or up to nearly six million, if 200 is recruited. Now, that actually sounds to me to be roughly the cost of the 200. I, I would have thought maybe 30 officers cost a million, 186, you know, it's that sort of ballpark. So it's really, do you, Commissioner, feel that although the irony is we would support this, that actually there is a danger of central government taking over and step by step, you know, salami slice by salami slice. So ultimately, you have people elected every four years, but frankly, they just do. You might as well get rid of them all because you basically the Home Secretary decided all. Do you think philosophically that is a danger, albeit that in practice, um, you know, it's, it's maybe not quite there? But yeah. thank you. Congratulate the Chief Constable and yourself, Commissioner, on outstanding results in fairly sort of straightened times. Um, yeah, the question is, um, <coughs> I too have consulted back in Sefton with my colleagues and, and various other people, uh, and generally everybody is supportive, uh, certainly of our police force, certainly of the work that the Chief is doing. Um, however, what they are concerned about um, is that, um, that we take recognition that the Council tax is a regressive tax, and that central government is shifting the burden from the taxpayer, where the ability to pay is taken into account, onto a taxation system where there is no accountability to pay. So, although we're supportive of it, we are keen that uh, when this is marketed to the public in the recruitment, that it is explained to people that, and, and I'm not putting words in your mouth, that this is not really the way we would have sought to fund this. Um, also, we're nowhere near 2010, and we still <coughs> will face straightened times with this. So really, it's a general question as to you know, how this is then marketed to the public, because it, it would not be accepted that this is some form of triumphal um, explanation of, of mass recruitment. The second one, uh, which I think possibly um, the Chief may be addressing, is concerns over problems with recruitment. Um, there's a finite pool of... Uh, well qualified and able people out there. Um, I've no doubt you will have thousands of applicants. That's always been the case. Um, certainly, you know, there are people who've always wanted to be a police officer. Personally, I think some of those people should be disqualified uh, from being a police officer. Um, no, 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 no. Hopefully, they've never got in. Um, but, um, you know, the, uh, and there will be problems because. There's going to be mass recruitment around the country, and we do recognise that the new officers are starting on significantly lower starting pay than used to be the case because of government uh, decision, and they're also getting very poorer 
conditions and pensions. Um, so, you know, you're recruiting from a pool of able people, but perhaps uh, what the force is able to offer is not as good as it used to be. So the, there's concerns about, you know, how, how would you get ahead of the game and recruit? So I'll, I'll do my answer to the two questions and then I'll let you to pick up uh, on some of the others. But very quickly, response on that last question about A levels. In Merseyside, we've always chosen to go to the higher level. So we, we are at the top of the recruitment band. We've never uh, had a problem recruiting, and therefore it's fair to say that we've, we've always maintained that new starters come in at the top of the, the available bandwidth. Chief will say more about that. I, 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 do, I, I do acknowledge that, Commissioner, but even with that decision, which was the right decision, um, I think you know back in 2013, it still left a £3,000 gap between those who joined in April of 2013 and those who joined after the 6th of April. You know, there's a significant drop in pay, uh, and I know the government had placed that at 19,000, which quite frankly is a disgrace. I, I, yeah, I concur with that. The, um, the philosophical question about the you'd have to have some other form of local oversight and governance because it, uh, the home office, in my view, the home office, and the, the, where the PCCs were introduced in 2012, what, what was also broken at that point was a three-sided, a three, tripartite partnership within national British policing. The home office stood back, home secretaries stood back and said, if there are any problems locally, it's the PCC's fault. We were, in my view, introduced uh, partly to redress the government's view then that there was insufficient accountability of the chief constable, but also to provide a lightning rod. So if things went wrong locally, then you know it is to blame. Um, and to a degree, the continuing use of uh, thresholds through the uh, preset thresholds did tie our hands, yeah. but we could always have gone lower. We didn't have to go to the, 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 the top of the threshold. So there was a degree to which we could choose, uh, but it was limited, I agree with you. Now, it is particularly limited for forces like ours who are heavily grant dependent, because you're right, the government determines what the budget's going to be for Merseyside Police. And, and I, I feel a, a police commissioner needs to be conscious of the fact that the public of Merseyside understand that really well, but want you to make sure that all available resources that can be made available to the police and the chief constable, that that happens. And, and so my approach was always to try and keep the costs of government and oversight really low, um, and I feel we've done that every year uh, since I was elected, a million pounds that used to go into the running of the police authority goes into Merseyside Police. So there's, every year there's been that benefit. Uh, so there are local decisions that you can make that bring a big difference to the police force. And in particular, how the chief constable then goes about making their decisions, how funding decisions are made and so on. Um, and the speed with which has, it's no good the force being ready and willing to make quick decisions around an issue like recruitment <coughs> if the police commissioners are not also willing to understand quickly to read into the details so they know what the risks are but yet support the direction that the chief constable of the force want to go in so I, that's my <coughs> view of it I know the Liberal Democrats have, were highly suspicious of the whole project and remain so and I think uh, that's understandable so are the public uh, there are even through the consultations the, I will still get members of the public who don't understand the role of the police commissioner and who think my salary could be much more usefully used by the chief constable he might feel the same but I've got to tell you you've got to have some form of local governance and oversight for so long as you have local forces within the boundaries that we're currently yeah. working to if that change is going forward and the 43 reduce in number, then there will still have to be some form of over oversight, now whether that's directly elected or nominated from local authorities, 
who knows? But that's the discussion that will continue, I'm sure, over the coming uh, years as the role of PCCs beds in or not. Uh, uh, town will tell. John, in terms of uh, shifting the burden, I, what, I, I'm not going to argue with what you said. It is, uh, it is patently true that uh, for those areas where uh, there is a predominance of band A properties, which we have, the majority of band A households, then uh, they have felt an increasing burden. Uh, interestingly, I met a gentleman in Southport uh, during this consultation who said he'd seen that the consultation was taking place and he'd come, he'd come deliberately to talk to me about the precept. And he told me that he had a small private pension and therefore didn't get any state support other, other than what he was absolutely entitled to. He didn't get any of the benefits support and he didn't get any help with his council tax and so on. And he said to me, I understand why you're doing this. He said, but the mayor's putting up their precept with the regional mayor, the local authority's putting up their precept too, and for me, I really can't afford it. So there are people for whom this is a burden. Um, I, I acknowledge that. <coughs> I don't know what I can do as the responsible person for the police budget when the majority say, we, would, we don't mind that. We would prefer to pay rather than see fewer officers. It's a really hard <coughs> position to be in because I understand that some people are finding it very, very difficult indeed. But at the same time, that is probably something that needs to be addressed <laughs> elsewhere. And I would join any lobby to, to say to the government, we need to give more support to those who are really feeling the pinch. Thanks, Commissioner. Council, I'd love to discuss the increasing centralisation of, of policing and position of PCCs, but being totally political, obviously I won't. So, uh, Councillor, in relation to the question that you asked, um, recruitment at the moment has not been difficult, despite the numbers we're looking at. We have more people, uh, far more people than we have places, and we're able to keep that level of um, quality that we're recruiting where it should be. We also have an awful lot of transferring applications, um, which is different from neighbouring forces. We've got a number of officers from across our neighbouring forces and further afield who want to work in Merseyside because of the style of policing, I've got to say, um, because of some of the successes that we're having. So recently, we've taken roughly 130 transferees, uh, and we will take more because of the saving in relation to training costs, etc., <coughs> which has got to be balanced against the fact that their salary costs are higher than you balancing that, taking transfer is choosing preferable as long as the right quality transfer is. Fully agree with your comments in relation to starting pay for police officers, it's disgraceful. It's far lower than it was ten years ago. Uh, it's nowhere near measurably where it was 34 years ago when I joined the police. Um, the amount we're asking our young officers, or not so young officers on some occasions to do, for the money that we pay them, the dangers that they're being placed in, I think is really it's pretty much close to disgrace. Uh, we do need, that does need to be addressed. Any rise <coughs> in police officer pay obviously comes out of my existing budget. The government do not give, give us extra money for pay increases, uh, which is why uh, police chiefs have only been able to put four suggestions for a 2.5% pay increase for officers this year to the National Pay Negotiating Board. I would like to double treble that at least. <coughs> um, that is not possible with current budgets. Um, and 